Next up we have uh, Philippa Gardner from Imperial College London who will be giving us an overview of the program logic and resources uh, session. So I know Zach and it's very weird to just go, hi, and then... <laughs> So my session is Program Logics and Resources. And this is the program. And I have really quite a nice task because they're all working on separation logic. And I work on separation logic. So I'm able to tell you a little bit about something I love. So um, basically, separation logic is a program logic for reasoning, reasoning compositionally about um, programs. And in particular, it's a program logic, so you have pre-post condition and are reasoning about code. And it's compositional in the sense that you can reason about program fragments and stitch them together. Now, quite often when we get uh, referee comments back is, uh, what do you mean by compositional? So people use the word compositional all the time. In um, the whole logic, we have compositional with respect to sequential composition, and we have a sequential composition rule for that. For whole logic, it actually is also compositional with respect to, for example, functions. It calls functions well and concurrency, but only if you're manipulating variables. If you're manipulating the heap, you get into all manner of problems, and we needed to do so something better and different. And that came um, with separation logic. So with separation logic, you are able to reason about programs that are manipulating the heap in a way that you can um, work with the parts and then uh, um, stitch the parts together. And this has gone all the way to people in um, several uh, companies now, but the key first one was uh, Meta um, that did this in practice. You can reason about the tiny function um, working with um, the resource of the heap that the function needs, never mind that you've got millions of, co uh, of lines of code in the database, you can work with this little bit. It was a big aha step. There's other people that have done different techniques um, that are uh, doing similar things now, um, but this was a biggie. So, uh, three um, uh, papers. I want to say a tiny bit more about separation logic in order to talk about what these guys have done. So the technique and the reason why we can reason compositionally about program fragments is because we can work with little bits of the heap and put them together. You put them together using a separation um, conjunction rather than the normal conjunction of um, first order logic. You're working with predicates that describe little bits of the heap, such as a cell going from um, a location to a block. And you are stitching things together using something called the frame rule. Now, what these guys have done is um, do more. So basically, it started with um, Francois Pratier's work um, last year in last year's Popple. And what they do is, as well as having this um, cell, this way of reasoning about a tiny bit of heat resource, they also have, for a location, what does it make? Grab at all the point, all the locations that can reach this location. And they do that using a multi-set of locations. And of course, I'll let them um, say what they're doing. But what it means is that they can grab the idea of logical deallocation. If you have the cell, you own it. And you know that for your location, you've got nothing that's reachable to you. Then you're allowed to deallocate. 
and you can deallocate and get some information about the size of the block that is now being freed. So the size of the block, block that it corresponds to what they're saying here about the heap space. It's, you've got a record of a bit of the block that you can now use again. So um, they are linking this to language use with garbage collection, being very careful about how the space, the heap space, is being used. And last year, they did it for a very low-level language. What you will hear today is about a high-level lambda calculus language. Uh, just to point out, Arta, he's done um, software foundations for separation logic, the, that Cox series. The second one is um, this one. Now, these guys are macho. They're doing extremely real-world stuff. And we've got this thing called refinement types. A refinement type <coughs> is a type like an integer where if, an ele if elements satisfy that integer, they must be greater than or equal to zero, something like that. So it's types and more information given by a logical predicate. It's possible to do this, um, adding separation logic to it, meaning you're talking about a location with this block. This block represents an integer. That integer um, uh, has to be greater than or equal to zero, something like that. And then uh, what these guys are doing are saying, we really want to do it in such a way that the code developers can think about it as if it's macho types. So they want the code developers to eventually be able to do um, invariant properties of program of loops using these sorts of types. So they're um, trying quite hard on this to such an extent that they're fully embedded with a group at Google and they're um, doing verification of a hypervisor and in particular at the moment a buddy allocator, a small allocator. This is possible. And this can be real world because of this guy, Caven. Caven finished his um, PhD and got his viva on Monday. And it's all going fine because he's awesome. He took over 10 years to do his PhD thesis. And he is still working with Pizzle, um in Cambridge. And his point is he's going to um, capture the C ISO standard as much as he possibly can. And he, um, he um, investigates very carefully different types of undefined behavior depending on the standard not being accurate enough. And codes that up by doing a reference interpreter in OCaml from big C to a core bit called core. That core bit is typed in this separation logic refinement types way. So if you want to go and hear more, uh, come to this session. The last one I'm going to talk about is conditional um, contextual refinement. So contextual refinement is the following. You've got um, a implementation. You've got some bit of code. And then you've got an, ab you've got an abstract bit of code. So you've got program, abstract program. And you have the idea that um, the uh, program uh, P, uh, the, um, uh, the abstract program is a refinement of the, uh, of the um, implementation. And in particular, so you've got P less than the abstract program. When is that possible? When you've got context that um, that's why it's called contextual refinement, that closes up over both of them. The behaviors are the same in the sense that the behaviors of the program P in a context is contained in um, the abstract program A in the same context. And then it might not be for all context. It might be the closing context with the program being a program fragment that's open. So, that's the idea of contextual refinement. And you have P less than A. But actually, you can have a transitivity relation and build these up using um, horizontal composition. So um, then the idea is you can do that, R but 
separation logic says you can do conditional stuff. If you have a precondition, then C has some behavior, and as long as it's terminating, you have um, a postcondition. So um, the uh, separation logic is bringing this conditional stuff in, and their job is to put the two together. It has been put together in the past, but not getting that transitivity relation. Now you can get the best of both worlds from um, this paper. Here's this session. I hope you come and I hope we see you there.